Hello, you're welcome to this week's edition of The Magnet. The Magnet with tag mentoring on television and lending a voice to the growth of your business. Today, we are going to focus on lifestyle. What's your lifestyle? Do you adopt the one that can give you healthy living? It is when you're healthy, you think of making money. Yes, we try to encourage people to grow their businesses and also mentored on television, the way we call it. We have somebody who has a beautiful story to tell and has decided to go into advocacy, encouraging us to adopt healthy lifestyle. And who is this person? Her citation will interest you to the extent that you'll be motivated to stay tuned to commence our interactive session. Let's go for a short break to give you her citation. We'll be back shortly. Emurowe Abeke Ololo was born in Sapele, Delta State, and had her early childhood there. She also had her elementary and secondary education in Sapele. She graduated with Bachelor of Education from the University of Ilori and also holds a PGD from the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON, Topo Badagri. She worked in the security field for many years and has held many leadership roles, including most notably a one-time area commander of NDLEA. In 2013, she has passed through several travails battling and winning a deadly cancerous disease. With sheer determination and doggedness, she has not only won the battle, but has taken it as a challenge to chart the way of advocacy on elderly living with some literary works. Emurove is currently a health coach and manages a lot of people using her personal experience to counsel them, particularly cancer patients. She has a long track record of helping lots of sick people get well with her wealth of knowledge in natural therapy. She is married with three children. Welcome back. The program is The Magnet, and it's a great pleasure to share in the lovely story of Mrs. Emurove Abeke Ololo. You are welcome to The Magnet, madam. Thank you so much, ma'am. And thank you for agreeing to come and mentor us on how we can adopt healthy lifestyle. It's a privilege. Okay, thank you. How can you describe, summarize lifestyle generally? Lifestyle is basically how you live what you eat how you eat the food and the things you do that is just lifestyle okay how you live do you think you are a nigerian you live in nigeria from your relationship with people do you think we adopt healthy lifestyles we try as much as possible to adopt good lifestyle, early lifestyle, but because of the way the Nigerian financial environment is, it's difficult for most people who want to do that to do it. But Nigerians, we are trying. I heard you talking about the economic aspects. Is it expensive to adopt a healthy lifestyle? It is expensive to adopt it, but comparatively, when you look at this, the, the, when somebody is sick, the money one have to spend to take care of sickness, then adopting it is very, very cheap. What has healthy lifestyle got to do with sickness? Of course, if you don't eat healthy, you will fall sick, garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> it's what you eat that will give you good health. Okay. You eat good food, you'll be good health-wise. If you eat bad food, you come out sick. Why do you think Nigeria will not adopt a healthy lifestyle? Why, what is the challenges they are having? Nigerians, uh, at least, um, this healthy living lifestyle is, is what everybody has been practicing. Most people have been practicing since the COVID-19. Um, um, the reason why some of them will not want, cannot or will not, some of them are actually in, in discipline, but generally, is the economic things are difficult. Sometimes you want to do it, you don't have the money to do it. Madam, I, I, I'm still a bit uh, confused how you relate economy to lifestyle. Because sometimes some of the things that you even need to take may not be expensive. 
It's just a question of discipline like you talked about. There's some fast food noodles. They're very cheap. So at least you have to have money. You have to have plenty of food for you to even start choosing from what to eat. So because they don't, Nigerians, most Nigerians don't really have the money right now. So they go for the cheap one and they, they, don't, they don't have the choice to even make, let me go for the healthy one or the unhealthy one. These noodles, they are very cheap. You put it on fire, less than two minutes, it's cooked, and you eat just to fill up. They are not healthy, instant life, mm. instant food. <laughs> okay, you know, interesting enough, until recently that we are having a debt of food, I mean, scarcity. Nigerian foods are not as expensive. Don't, I mean, we have quite, Nigeria is blessed to have yes. variety of food that we can choose from and eat healthily. That's not expensive. And uh, right now, Nigerian foods, they are not supposed to be expensive, but because farmers are not afraid to go to the farm because of insecurity problem, so the foods are not very expensive. For example, a small tuber of yam, the smallest is about a thousand naira. So you say you want to do elderly living. I will illustrate with this. I have a lady that is doing um, as complex ovarian cyst, and then we give her 90 days and fatty liver, if she doesn't go down, and she's also obese, if she doesn't go down in weight, they're going to do the operation to remove the cyst. And then I place her on all the stuff that I, that I usually do for those that, that I'm doing weight management with. She could not afford most of them. Okay. She could not. Okay. Even when you compare the money she will eventually spend on surgery, she could not. But do you know what she resulted to? Fasting. <laughs> Although that is part of weight management. That is part of the treatment, the right? therapy, right? Yes, but then, you know, we have to do it stage by stage. Mm. But she had no money. From your profile, you had worked with uh, NDLEA before now. Kudos to the milestone they have reached, particularly lately. Yes. What would you say the issue of drug has to do with lifestyle that is our focus today? The issue of drugs for those that are on drugs. No matter what you eat, you are taking in chemicals. And you are putting more problems in your body. For those that are on drugs, and there are all types of drugs now, all types. So when you take in these narcotic drugs, of course, even if you decide to go on a healthy uh, lifestyle, it will not manifest in your body. Now, what is, what is, what is narcotics? Narcotics. You are taking things that, that you are not ordinarily supposed to take in. That is not prescribed. That is not prescribed. Especially that are addicted. So when you take it in, and you, okay, the question is, if you are taking narcotic drugs, how can you be disciplined enough to do healthy living lifestyle? The two of them don't go together. So most people that are into hard drugs, narcotic drugs, they don't know the meaning of healthy or healthy lifestyle. Because narcotics is the direct opposite of a good lifestyle. Okay. It's a direct opposite. But do you know what you're talking about? Virtually everybody is guilty of it. Yes. Some people cannot sleep. You know, like you don't want to mention some brand. They just go, and then they are able to sleep, not knowing that it's a false kind of, uh, you know, sleep. Having uh, some form of headache, or you just take two analgesic from your own practice when you were serving with NDLA, tell us the, the, the prevalent rates of how people abuse drugs. And uh, the big men are not left out from our conversation earlier. Of course, from the news, because I've left NDLA for a long time now, from the news, the President Sherman is doing very, 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 very well. Kudos to him and NDLA. Um, a lot of people abuse drugs from the statistics. You're talking about why some of them actually do abuse drugs. It's sleep, insomnia. And this is your program, you, you, you actually anchor most things to do with business. If you don't sleep well, you can't be very healthy. And if you're not very healthy, how can you do a very good business? So for sleep problem, this healthy, this healthy lifestyle will help. That is why, that is one of the reasons why you have invited me. So. There are healthy ways, healthy lifestyle you can keep that will give you good sleep without resulting to narcotics or any um, chemicals to make you sleep. Because the way God created the body, there are healing mechanisms, there are things in the body that when you put them 
in place, you can sleep naturally without resorting to any type of chemicals. But why do you think people are in denial? I mean, escapism, so to say. They think that once they use some false method to sleep, or when they take this to feel high, from your own relationship, because you have once been there, uh, research even revealed that some big men are even more guilty of the. Why do you think they, they adopt that uh, style, so to say? They do adopt such styles because one, for those, especially like, like you said, the big men, they know their worth financially. So if they know their worth, so I am not supposed to have this type of problem. So they not tell themselves they don't have it. Even when the medical lab re uh, result is, 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 is telling you that you have a particular problem, they will deny it, I don't have it. We are just talking about big men. Zero down to the youth. How can a man, for instance, who is guilty of abuse of substance or whatever, that he may not want the child or the family to know, be able to curtail a child, his own child, or any child in society guilty of the same abuse? It's really difficult because parenting these days is a, is a in fact, parents today need parenting. <laughs> today world, today Nigeria, parents themselves need parenting. So you're telling your child you shouldn't do drugs and you are doing it. And it is practice what I do, not practice what I say. You can't hide it forever. Even if you're not living together, they will see you. So it's a very difficult one. We have Mrs. Emorove Abeke Ololo. What a beautiful story. We'll be listening to that story when we come back from this break. It is The Magnet. Join us shortly. The program is The Magnet. I have a beautiful lady with me here. You will not believe the journey she has undergone. Can you believe that she has fought and conquered cancer, the deadly disease? Congratulations, madam. Thank you, ma. It's to God's glory. Still again, in the area of lifestyle, before we listen to your story, what has lifestyle got to do with habits? What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is how you live, what you eat, how you eat your food. What is habit? Habit is practice, something you do from time to time. So you can't actually separate your habit from your lifestyle. So if you are somebody that is eating a particular food. Okay, let's use a gluten, for example. Gluten? Yeah. You know the, the size of the stomach. If you want to know the size of the stomach, set your fist. Okay. So this is the size of your stomach. So wh whatever food you are eating... Should be this size. Should be this size. Really? Yes. So if you are eating bigger than this, you know what you're doing to yourself. Overeating. Yes, you are. <laughs> You are. <laughs> really? Yes, really. Hmm. So, so if that is what you do, you eat every time bigger than your food. That is your habit. You cannot just eat food. Let me tell you, when you eat this, your stomach is actually full. But you know what we do? Because we enjoy the food, we want to eat it until it is finished, until the pot is empty. That is habit. So what happens to the excess other than the one that the feast, than the feast? There's actually no excess. When you go to the kitchen, take a small plate. No, I mean the space is available oh, in the tummy. Oh, the space. Yeah. No, the stomach is like a balloon. Okay, it so will be more, stretching. Yeah, it will be stretching. <laughs> so you keep stretching it, keep stretching it. And the bigger your bowel, the more quantity of food you have to fill in the space. Wow, I, I tend to admire you because if you go for medical tests now, they say they want to know your BMI. I'm sure you will overpass. <laughs> This kind of size that I'm looking at here, you know, is that what you have been practicing even before you experienced, uh, you went into that journey? Yes, I've actually been a slim person, really. And then when the doctor said I had um, cancer in 2013, I've, you know, I started adopting this elderly living lifestyle and my habit changed. And since I am healed, I still continued 
because I cannot go back. Okay, look, this this is what you are just saying as if you had a malaria or all this or that. There's no disease that is small. But when you say you had, you are just saying it off the hand like that. You had cancer. Cancer is what you, in fact, they say it's death sentence. It, uh, you know, share a bit of that story with us. I mean, what were you did that you were living a negative lifestyle that made you to have it or what, what happened? Prior to 2013, I've always been an introvert. Very simple. I just eat like every other Nigerian rice, bread, curry, all this stuff and all that. Um, just that. And then all of a sudden, it's a long story, I'm making short. I had this lump <clears throat> between my armpits and my breast. And then when I go to the doctor, the doctor will tell me it's just swollen lymph nodes. And it was there one year, two years, three years. And then each time I go, I don't usually go there because I'm going for the lymph nodes. Maybe, you know, when I had malaria, typhoid, I take the children down for little. I say, hey, doctor, that thing is still there. We say, don't worry, don't worry. So that thing ended up being 10 years later, lump, cancer, cancerous. So the question is, as of that 10 years back, if I know what some people should be knowing, especially when you read my book, permission to say that. Sure, you see. Yeah. The healthy living, the healthy living. If as of the first year I was told, I would have changed my diet, I would have adopted this healthy living and lifestyle. lifestyle. That 10 years, the food, the lifestyle I have adopted would have reduced it. But because 10 years back, when I went to the doctor, they told me it was swollen lymph nodes. You know what I was doing? My lifestyle, I was still practicing the same lifestyle, negative lifestyle, eating anything I like. It's like I was feeding the, the lymph the, nodes. The, the, the lump. I was fertilizing it. So it was growing, yeah, one, two, three, until... Uh, it became a... Cancerous. Cancerous. Okay, uh, what I'm trying to say now is that when you eventually you were told, it's like you were in a state of denial, like what people will say, because I'm reading through your book, that you didn't even adopt the normal orthodox. You decided to go the natural way, you know, even from the, until much, much later that people convinced you. Why did you take that route? Okay, um, when I was told, of course, I, I read a lot. I read a lot. Encyclopedia, anything I read a lot. So, um, I decided to go natural. I have a health coach. I want to give him credit. It's good to me, Reverend Tony. So he was the one managing me. And then as he was managing me, he told me to do natural. So for two good years, I was doing natural, this lifestyle we're talking about, eating natural food, not bringing things that are chemicals into my body. They were not easy, but they were doable because the, the statement is, cancer means that it's a death sentence. I told myself, I will not die. I will live to declare the glory of God among the living. I'm going to do all what a man can do and what man cannot do, God will do. So that was the lifestyle I kept. And what were the things I was doing? Exactly. You're asking the question. Blending took it from me. vegetables, hmm. drinking them raw. And when I don't have diesel to fuel the generator, trust Nigerian Nepal, most times no light. The cancer will not tell you that there is no money, they will wait. They don't wait. In fact, it will impoverish both the, 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 the poor and, and the, the rich. rich. They don't respect you. So I will say, okay, Nepal or no Nepal. My teeth, it's like a blender. It's if a I grinder. can eat bone, you know the way we crack bone. <laughs> you know, worry style now. Yes, now hey, we crack it, you know. <laughs> You'll be dragging bone with, with dogs. Dogs have good eye, you see, waiting now, leave this bone for me now. So if I can crack bones with my teeth, although bones are sweet, mm -hmm. vegetables are not sweet. Mm. So but cry the bitter ones. Ah no, they are not. But when you remember that you're going That's to a, conquer this thing. You have a, a Yes, you are a, determined. So I was showing the, the the vegetable. So what do I do? I enter the kitchen. Lock the door. So I start showing it like a goat. It was not good enough. It was not palatable. It was difficult. But I've got to live to tell the story. And I'm using this to encourage you. You want to do business. If you are sick, you can't do business, my dear. If you are sick, you can't even think well. 
If you are sick, your family is sick. If you are sick, your pocket is sick. If you are sick, everything around you is sick. Everybody around you is sick. Because the sickness called cancer is a devourer. It will impoverish you. Everything goes. Mm. And at the end of it, people die. So I was eating vegetable raw most of the time. When there's light, I blend and I drink. And when you blend, you do not filter. You blend. With the rough edges. You blend, you drink the juice, vegetable juice with the rough edges. And if you don't have a super um, blender, the rough edges will be so much. So you use spoons, scoop it, put it in your mouth, use water to gulp it, and tell yourself that I'm taking food. And of course, before you start anything, you pray to God. You say, I ask God for everything. I just ask God for everything. God just made this thing sweet in my mouth. Do you know mm. God answers prayers? All types of prayers, both big, both That's small. small. Ask answers. for anything. Just okay. ask for anything. Say, God, as I'm eating this, 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 this vegetable, just I'm, make it. And be faithful about it. Yes. Just make it sweet in my mouth. Anytime you want to eat it, just say it. Somehow the thing will go down your throat. Just push in, push it in. It was not palatable, but it was worth doing. And God Almighty saw me through. How did your family take this, your natural route that you took? Yes, um, <clears throat> I did the natural for two years. For the two years, it did not spread. I didn't have any problem. Everything I was feeling, everything was okay. But you know, I have always been a very slim person. But I was not getting fatter, and that is one disadvantage of living a good, healthy lifestyle. You can never be fat. But I was even getting thinner, slimmer and thinner. You know, there's a little bit of difference. Mm -hmm. So my family insisted, you must do chemotherapy, because that is what they know. I have a doctor, one or two doctors mm -hmm. in my family, and because they were the one actually helping me with my husband and everybody in the family. That, because healthy living, Lifestyle is very expensive. But I always ask people, which one is cheaper? Sickness? Is cancer oh. cheap? Oh, no, it's not. Prevention is cheaper. So um, they told me that then the least I could spend monthly was 150000 Monthly? Yes, monthly. The least monthly. So they said, if you don't do the, the orthodox, we're not going to fund you. So I went to meet my coach, and he told me that you have built your immune system so high. For these two years, you've been doing all the healthy living, lifestyle, and habits. You've done all this stuff. Your system is so, your immune system is so strong, it can stand any chemo or radiotherapy. So, and then, of course, prayerfully again, because I can't survive without <laughs> prayers. <laughs> so, and I went into the chemo. And in between the chemo, I was doing some selected of the alternative of the alternative in between and at particular time okay. so that they don't interact with the exactly. chemotherapy. It wouldn't interfere. Yes, you have to be very, very careful so that this is doing its own, that is doing its own. So that was what I was doing and God saw me through. But I, I'm, I'm interested in knowing what you have against the chemotherapy that a lot of people would naturally adopt, just like your family convinced you to, to eventually go for it. Chemo does good and bad to the body. How? How? Chemotherapy destroys actually the cancer cells. Now, it, it destroys the cancer cells. But remember that the body has good cells. And the body, because the person is still alive, have more good cells than bad cells. So if the chemotherapy is destroying cancer cells, that means also destroying good cells. So if it's destroying good cells and we have more good cells in the body, don't you think it's destroying more good cells than bad cells? But we have more good cells. Aren't you part of those that advocate that we should have this uh, combination, collaboration? of orthodox practice and the natural practice? Of course, the, the, the orthodox should marry the um, um, alternative. There should be a marriage between them. It should be a synergy. Yes, we should synergize. They should be, even as I'm talking to you, I have a botanical garden. I have my herbs that I use. Now, let me tell the world. For every environment, there are different plants. Yes. Why do you think it is so? Because God knows that we have environmental issues. So when you are sick as a Nigerian, you go to your backyard, 
your plant will solve your problem. If it's well researched to find out to what is efficacious for. Yes, in Nigeria, our 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 great grandfathers, that is those were the things we were using, but because they were not documented. We heard of our lower leaves those days. Yes, I, it's, it is part of the list we're <laughs> using now. But the Chinese, for example, they mm. documented theirs. So we have all our leaves in our backyard. You categorize our food we take as alkaline and acidic. I mean, you are just telling us. And what it really caught my attention there is categorizing uh, even the fish, seafood, that is part of seafood that we are encouraged. By the way, when you have gotten to a certain age to eat, you, you, you categorized it as acidic, as something that you be eating lesser or something. Can you clarify that? You know, our, our sea bodies, our uh, sea, our rivers and all that, they are heavily polluted. Okay. So these fish, and I know most of our industrial waste are pumped into the rivers. So, and when they are pumped into the rivers, the fish swallow the, these, these chemicals. And these fish end up in our bellies. Hmm. And when your body is acidic, okay, when these fish consume that, we eat that. Ordinarily, ordinarily itself, the fish is acidic. They're not taking chemicals into their body. We're not eat all to, and makes our body more acidic. Now, what is, what is, what is? When your when your uh, internal your body environment is more acidic, any sickness can grow, any sickness. But when your uh, body environment is on the alkaline, alkaline side, no sickness will grow there. Congratulations once again. Yes, thank this you, is her book. We thank you very much. Thank you, ma. It's a privilege. That's our program today. We'll make it a date with us same time next week. I'm sure you have been mentored to adopt a good lifestyle. And then if you are having a good lifestyle, of course, you grow your business. Don't forget to follow us on our social media handles. And then, of course, always make an inquiry on the number on the screen. Join us same time next week when we shall bring you another personality, another magnet on the program. Until then, bye for now.